Welcome everyone. Today we are going to learn how to log a user in through Facebook with the PHP Graph SDK. Here's what our web page will look like at the end of this video. When we get to our web page, we will get a login with Facebook link. Click on the login with Facebook link and this will take us directly to Facebook. Here we will grant access to our Facebook app. The user will. I'm logged in as my test user Mark to Facebook. The app I have set up, login with PHP Graph SDK, is asking Mark to continue and grant permissions. I'm going to do continue as Mark. This will redirect us back to our web page, and now we have an access token so we can grab onto all of Mark's info. His first name, last name, we get his user ID. Display his profile picture right here, and down here we're just going to print out some debug info. Alrighty, before we can get coding, we need to set up a Facebook app. This is what we are going to use to talk to the API through the SDK. So you're going to go to developers.facebook.com and you're going to click the My Apps and you're going to do Add New App. You're going to fill in a display name and you're going to click Create App. Once you do that, it'll take you to your app dashboard. Looks something like this. So here's the app I've created. I called it Login with Graph SDK. All right, let's go through a few key things here in the dashboard. First, we're going to head over to the Settings Basic. Here's where we have our app ID and our app secret. This is what we'll be using in the code to connect to the Facebook SDK. A couple other things, the app icon right here, this is what pops up right above that button. When it says continue as your username, there's got your app icon right here. Privacy policy URL, I think that's required in order to go live, which means anybody can connect to your app then. Let's look at the test users. Uh, the test users, you can create a new test user just like this, create test user, and then you can actually log in so to Facebook with these test users, you just use the, the email address right here and you can set a password on them. Then you can go to Facebook and you can log in as that test user. So there we're logged in as Sandra, the test user we just created. The other thing you need to do is you need to add the Facebook login product. So under product sections, you want to make sure you have Facebook login selected, which I already have it selected so it's not going to show up on this page, but you would click setup and it would take you to the settings page here under the Facebook login settings. Actually the most important part is this redirect URI right here. This has to be set correctly. So when we in the code, when they click on that login link, we're gonna pass along a redirect URI and it has to match what's here in the dashboard. So they click on login, we pass along a redirect URI, they go to Facebook and they click continue as and then it's gonna redirect them back to the to the URI here that we have specified. It doesn't match you're going to get a an error pop up saying this redirect URI is not in your valid OAuth redirect URIs in your app dashboard. So basically if you don't have a valid URI here um, the user can't log in. More about that once we start coding. I think that's good enough for a quick walkthrough of what we need in the app dashboard. Now let's start coding. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create our config file and the only things that we're going to hold in here is our app secret and our app ID. So we are going to head over to our Facebook dashboard and those are coming from the settings basic. So you're going to copy your app ID, place that in the config file where it says your FB app ID. Then we are going to get our app secret also in the app dashboard. You're going to click the show button here, you're going to copy the app secret and you're going to paste it right here. But the secret's secret, so I can't paste it here and show it publicly. Once you've put your app ID and app secret, you can close the config.php file. Now we are going to create our index file. This is our index file. First thing we're going to do is require config. Now we have access to our app ID and our app secret that we've defined. Now we need to require the Facebook graph SDK. We're going to head over to github.com slash facebook slash php dash graph dash SDK. And we're going to do clone or download and click download zip file. Save that. Find that in our downloads folder. We're going to right click it and we're going to click extract all. So I, I extracted that file just like this and we got our ID. I'm going to rename this just php dash graph dash SDK. Now we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call this the vendor folder. The folder that we're really interested in here is the this folder right here. This has got all the goods right here and here's where our auto load is as well. So we want to copy this Facebook folder into our vendor folder. And I got vendor Facebook. I'm actually going to rename Facebook to PHP Graph SDK. All right. So our auto load that's going to load all this goodness is right here, auto load. So in order to include that, 
We're gonna hop back to our index file and we're gonna do another require. Vendor, PHP, graph, SDK, auto load. So we've got our app credentials right here and we've got the whole graph SDK being loaded up right there. Next, we're going to start our session. This is where we will store our access token. These are logs in through Facebook. Facebook gives us an access token. We're gonna to store that in the session so we can reuse it. Now we're gonna set up our app creds. So this is what we're gonna pass along when we make the call to the SDK. We got our app ID here that we define in the config file, and we got our app secret that we define in the config file as well. Now, there is another parameter you can pass along on the app creds, and that's access token, if you have it. All right, so if we have a session Facebook access token, we're gonna to use it. Otherwise, we're gonna know we don't have an access token, and we need to log the user in still. Now we're gonna set our if, if else blocks up to see if the user is actually logged in So here's our basic check for if the user is logged in. We're checking for a Facebook access token in the session first. If there is, we know they're logged in. If there is no session access token, then we're gonna check to see if there's a git variable code. When the user clicks on the button on the pop-up to allow access, Facebook redirects back to the redirect URI that we set up in the app, in the app dashboard, and they append a code on there. This code is used with the SDK to get an access token. Now, the reason we have a um, not session Facebook access token here is in case the user refreshes the page after they've been redirected back. If you try to refresh the page and you have the, co the code variable in the URL, the same code, you get a Facebook error. So on first time we see the code, we're gonna get the code and then we're gonna, in here, we're gonna set the Facebook access token here once we've grabbed onto it. And then if they refresh the page, they will fall into this first if statement. So here is where we need to get an access token. First of all, we are going to create our Facebook object. Next, we're going to create our helper. This is what's going to allow us to get an access token from Facebook. All right, so this is what is going to look like if the user, once the user gets redirected back to our page. We're gonna ch check for the code. We got the get code, so we're gonna fall in here. We're gonna set up a new Facebook object, and we're gonna set up a helper, which is going to get us the access token. So we're gonna set up our try catch, and if all goes well, we're gonna get an access token back. Once we get that access token, we have a few things to do. First of all, we're going to save it to the session. That way we know the user's logged in, and we can use it to get their Facebook credit or Facebook info. After the session is set, we're gonna add this to the app credentials. And then we're gonna set is logged in equals true because we've got an access token back. It's in our session, it's on the app creds. We're good to go. Now, if all of this fails, if we don't have it in the session, we don't have a code, this is where we're going to fall into. This else is where we're gonna see that login with Facebook link on the page. And the only thing we need to do here is set up Facebook object and a helper. Now we can set up the final if else, the most important if else. Here's where we're gonna actually display stuff. We're gonna check if the user's logged in, and then we're gonna display their username and their profile picture. If they're not, we're gonna give them that link. So I'm gonna start with the else. This is where they are not logged in and get login link. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna set up permissions. All right, so if the user's not logged in, Things are pretty straightforward here. This is the permissions. We're just asking for their, their email address. There's a lot of other permissions you can ask for. So we set permissions that we want to ask the user for, and then we're gonna pass those permissions along when we're getting the login URL. These are the permissions that show up above that user's button when it says continue as your username. It says this app is requesting you for these permissions. This is the permissions array that will pop up the most important thing in here is the get login URL. 
we're using our helper here that we set up right up here. And this is the redirect URI. This has to be in your Facebook dashboard under Facebook login settings. This has to match or you will get an error. It has to be right here in the valid OAuth redirect URI. If this URI is not specified right here, then uh, you will get a Facebook error telling you the URIs do not match. So this is our login URL. We echo out an A tag with that login URL and we say login with Facebook. So when they click on it, it's going to Facebook and then it will redirect us back to this page right here. Now moving on to the fun part or the user is logged in. This if statement right here is where we can, are going to get back our user information, display it to the user, username, first last name, and profile picture, and profile ID. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a new Facebook object. The reason we're creating a Facebook object again is because in case they fall into this if statement right here, we've created a Facebook object here, but at this point, the Facebook object did not have the default access token. So we created the Facebook object without the default access token, meaning this Facebook object up here will not give us any user information back. We will get an error. But we fall into here and, you know, we add the default access token onto the app creds. And so we set up a new Facebook object here. Now we have the app creds with the default access token guaranteed. Next is where we actually make the call to Facebook SDK to the graph SDK, to the me uh, endpoint, and then we get the user info. And that's all there is to it. We set up our Facebook response, which is actually the making the call to the API. We're going to specify the me object, meaning we're going to get some user info, and then the fields that we want back, first name, last name, and picture and ID comes back by default. So the only other thing I want to get here is some access token information. We're going to get stuff like when the access token expires, uh, is it valid? And to do that, we need to set up an OAuth request to Facebook. Right, so what we've done here is we've set up an OAuth client uh, call to Facebook, and then we're going to use that client to get access token information. This is going to return uh, lots of details about the access token. When it expires, is it valid, and so on. And we're passing in the uh, session Facebook access token, which has already been set in the session. So pass it along, and we get some information on that access token. Last but not least, we're going to show this stuff in the browser. So this section right here is showing us the user info we have gotten back from Facebook. We're going to say, hey user, you're logged in as your first name and your last name. We're going to show them your Facebook user ID, and then we're going to display their profile picture here. Next we're going to display just some, we're just going to dump this stuff out to a few text fields so we can see our responses that we're getting back from Facebook. All right, so what we've done down here below our other stuff is just some uh, helpful stuff for us developers. We can see the user info object we got back from Facebook uh, and the access token we got back from Facebook. And a few other things, we can make calls to the access token to see when it expires, just like this. Access token get expires at will return us a date object. Uh, and the access token is valid will return us a Boolean object, true or false, if it's valid or not. There are other calls we can make to access token. Well, that's going to do it for the coding. Quick walkthrough again. Acquire our config, app creds. Uh, load up Facebook autoload. This is going to give us the graph SDK. Start our session up and set up our app creds array. If we have an access token, add it to the app creds so we know we're logged in. Then we're going to do our is logged in check. If there's a session access token, we can use the access token. If we have a code in the uh, URL, we're coming from Facebook, so we're going to get a we're going to get ourselves an access token. Set it to the session, to the app creds, and we're logged in. None of these things are true. We show that it uh, logged in with Facebook link.
After that, we're going to do our is logged in if check. So if we are logged in, we're going to make a new Facebook object, get uh, whatever fields we want from the user, get some access token details, and then display all of that out. Otherwise, we're just going to display the login URL. Let's go through this whole process now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user, new test user. Every time you create a test user and you go through the app and you click on the button, there's no way to, I haven't figured out a way to deactivate that user. So you won't see the pop up. So I just, I just keep adding users to test it. We got our new test user, Ruth. We're going to set a password and then we're going to hit our web page. So we're Hitting our web page here, we're going to pretend we're Ruth and we're going to click login with Facebook. Looks like we're not logged in. So let's copy Ruth's email address, paste that email address in here and the password we created and click login. It's going to take us to our authentication page. Here's our app asking for permissions. I'm logged in as Ruth. I'm going to click continue as Ruth and redirect back to our login page. And we have all our info on Ruth that we have requested. Logged in as Ruth. We got our Facebook ID and her profile picture. Down here, we can see all of our debug information that we want. Uh, we got our user object we got back from Facebook. Profile picture is there and the user ID. Here's our access token information. We can see we got the expires at there. It's valid when it was issued. And down here, uh, using our methods on the access token, get expires and get is valid. We got our date here and the access token, which is a going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Uh, and I'll catch you later.